Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. Now, if you're like me, you love watching videos on YouTube. One of my favorite YouTubers is Michael Lowenster. I love his bass clarinet videos and I love how he makes them. And he's a constant source of inspiration for my own videos. Now, when I was watching his video today, I saw something that I'm all too familiar with, the dreaded left-hand lever nylon pin. This is a huge problem in modern clarinet design and lots of manufacturers do it and it has been a constant source of agony for clarinetists for years, and yet nobody has fixed it. Why is that? In the video today, we're going to answer those questions and more. So what is the huge problem with modern instruments, both clarinets and bass clarinets alike? Well, this is a left-hand lever. So you would either use this to play a C sharp, F sharp, or you would use the lever right next to it to play a B natural or E natural in the lower register. So this lever has to connect to the keys on the lower joint. Now it needs a little pin here so that it can articulate. And this pin is essentially what takes all the force of you pressing down on the key to close the pad cup lower down on the instrument. So in typical woodwind design, historically, this pin has always been made of metal and it really hasn't been too much of a problem from a strength standpoint. However, one problem that many manufacturers found is that it was too loud. So what they typically did was they would take a piece of a pad material, it's typically called fish skin, although it's actually made of sheep bladder, and they would just cover that pin and then stick it in the hole in the corresponding key. And that would quiet it down enough that it was good enough for most people. But manufacturers, they thought they could do better. They said, well, if this key is clicking because it's metal, then why don't we just make it out of plastic and that'll solve all our problems. There's just one little problem. Metal, specifically nickel silver or cooper nickel that is used in clarinet keys is a lot stronger than the plastic typically used, which is either Delrin or nylon. So while we've never had a problem with these metal keys, the plastic pins, they were breaking left and right. And this has been going on for years, decades even. Buffet was the first manufacturer to introduce plastic pins in their instrument, and immediately there were problems. Then other manufacturers followed. First Selmer with their clarinets and bass clarinets, and then lots of Chinese manufacturers such as Jupiter, Ridnor, and lots of other brands copied this design. And now we've gotten to a point where almost every modern clarinet has this feature, and it's a big problem. So now that we know what the problem is, how can we fix it? Well, that's a really good question. The best way to fix it is to simply replace the pins with a stronger material, either a metal or carbon fiber. However, there's a few things you can do if you have an instrument like this that has the plastic pins that you can't really afford to replace the pins, but you wanna make sure the instrument lasts as long as possible. The first and most important thing you can do is make sure that your lower pad cups are in good regulation. You want it so that when you press either of these levers, that both of these pads, or in this case of this uh, Selmer 67 bass clarinet, all three of these pads close at the same time, so that you have to put as little force on this key as possible. The more force you put down on the key, the more likely it is that you're going to snap that pin. So this is exactly the model that uh, Michael Lone Stern plays, and it has the, uh, the same pins. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten around to replacing these pins with something stronger because this isn't actually my bass clarinet, it's just the one I use but it's definitely something I plan on doing in the future. Alternatively, if you're looking for a new bass clarinet, consider looking for a model that doesn't have the plastic pins. While you may be looking for an older instrument that might not have as many bells and whistles as a flashy new summer privilege, these older instruments are great in their own right and will make a decent instrument even if you are a professional. <laughs> So now that we know what the problem is, the question is, what can you do about it? Well, if you own an instrument with plastic pins, you are going to want to consider getting them replaced at some point, either with metal pins or carbon fiber. If you have a woodwind specialist who regularly works on your instruments, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. However, if you live in a more rural area where you don't have access to a good repair tech, you may want to send your instrument out to have the pins replaced. 
And finally, if you ever get a chance to fill out a survey for a manufacturing company that makes instruments or happen to know somebody who works at one of these companies, let them know about this problem. Manufacturers should already know since this has been a problem for decades. However, many of them have refused to do anything about it. It would be extremely easy to replace the pins with something stronger such as carbon fiber or metal, yet no manufacturers have done this yet. So thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little bit informative. And maybe if you do have these pins on your instruments, hopefully you can get them fixed in time before something bad happens. Thanks and have a wonderful day.